my duty to present the uh, evidence upon counts one and two of the <coughs> indictment against the defendant Hess. Lord, uh, the uh, trial brief, which I believe the tribunal <coughs> have before them, uh, has been made out in the form of a fairly full note <coughs> of the evidence to which I intend to refer, and it may be uh, of convenience to the tribunal uh, to have it before them during the course of my presentation. My Lord, may I first prove the positions which he held and which are set out in Appendix A of the indictment and say a word about his early life. Uh, this defendant was born uh, in 1894. He is now 52 years old. He came to Germany for his education. He served in the German army during the last war. And in 1919, he uh, went to Munich University. There he became the leader of the Nazi organization in that university. And in 1920, he became a member of the Nazi party itself. He was uh, amongst the first of the SA, and he uh, became the leader of the Students' Corps of Police. In 1923, he took part in the Munich Bush, and as a result of that, uh, he uh, was uh, sentenced to 18 months imprisonment, half of which period he served in jail with Hitler himself. Uh, I stress that because it was during those seven and a half months in prison with Hitler, Hitler dictated Mein Kampf, and they did have a brief of their own. It may be that that is the brief which uh, Mr. Justice Biddle has before him. Uh, it ought, in fact, to have been withdrawn. <coughs> I, I, I'll send for a spare cop. Go on, come on. Well, uh, it was during that time that uh, Hitler dictated Mein Kampf to this defendant. <coughs> Dealing with his actual appointments, from 1925 until 1932, he was private secretary and ADC to Hitler. In 1932, he became the chairman of the Central Political Committee of the party in, successor, in succession to Gregor Strasser. In March 1933, after the Nazi party had come to power, he became a member of the Reichstag. And in April of that year, he was appointed deputy to the Führer, uh, a position of which he held uh, until he flew to England in May of 1941. That evidence so far is all contained uh, in two documents. One, a book called Dates of the History of the Nazi Party by Folks, uh, which is already in evidence. It's number four of the tribunal's document book. It is uh, PS 31 Six, three, and has already been put in as US 255. I quote from that yearbook. By decree of the Führer of April the 21st, 1933, the deputy of the Führer received full power to decide in the name of the Führer 
in all matters concerning party leadership. Thus, the deputy of the Führer is the representative of the Führer with full power over the entire leadership of the National Socialist German Workers' Party. The office of the deputy of the Führer is therefore an office of the Führer. In essence, it is the duty of the deputy of the Führer to direct the basic policies of party work, to give directives and to take care that all party work be done according to national socialist principle. All the threads of the party work are gathered together by the deputy of the Führer. He gives the final party word on all intra-party plans <coughs> and all questions vital for the existence of the German people. Two, approval of the deputy of the Führer of proposed appointments for officials and labor service leader. Three, securing the influence of the party over the self-government of the municipal units. Uh, I would particularly uh, refer the uh, tribunal to uh, the uh, square in the center showing the liaison, liaison officer of the Wehrmacht, showing his close association with the army, and on the right, in the right-hand column, at the top, chief of the foreign organization, about which I shall uh, tell the tribunal in a moment, commissioner for foreign pol policy, showing his concern with the foreign policy of the German state, <coughs> Commissioner for All Techn Technological Matters and Organizations, <coughs> Commissioner for All University ma Matters, the Commission on University Policy, showing his concern with the education of Germany, and two further down, Office for <coughs> Racial Policy, showing his concern with the anti-Jew policy the Nazi government followed. Uh, As Reich Minister without portfolio, uh, he uh, was stated uh, in the law to secure the unity of party and state of the 1st of December 1933. Uh, it was stated there that his task was to guarantee the close working cooperation of the party and the SA with public authority. I put uh, in that uh, uh, statute, it's PS 1395 and becomes 252. He acquired wide legislative powers, as has already been seen <coughs> from the extract which I have read from the a Nazi yearbook of 1941.